how did I manage internship, its duties, and especially working in one of the busiest colleges in Kolkata and also studying and preparing for what is the, I believe, one of the toughest exams of my life. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Anushka and today in this video of mine, I'll be discussing with you how you can prepare for NEET PG 2022 that will be conducted in March this year. Before proceeding with the video, I would request you all to subscribe to this channel, to leave a comment down below in the comment section so that it motivates me in turn to post such amazing videos more frequently. There have been so many aspirants, friends of mine, colleagues, juniors who are preparing for the NEET PG this year, who've asked me what is that key ingredient that will make sure that you crack the exam. For me, I believe it was consistency. For better understanding, as I always say, break it down into few parts. The shorter, the crisper, the better, right? So this video I have divided into four parts. Number one, the planning. What would I have done if I were in your shoes appearing for this exam this March? The second topic would be, what would I do every day on a daily basis? How would I prepare myself to appear for the NEET PG? The third would be, how would I maintain a study life balance, which is very, very important. And number four, last but not the least, why should you not give up? The motivation that you need that I would have required if I were in your place. So please make sure to watch the video right to the end. Now let's get started. First things first. What would I have done if I were to appear for the exam this March? Now, what I realized over the past few months of my preparation journey is that it's very important to have a plan chalked out right in front of you so that you know these are the things you're supposed to do one particular day. And if you're not able to cover all the topics, you know that you're lagging behind in these many things. If you don't make a plan, if you don't have a schedule of your own, you'll not know where you are lagging behind and you'll basically be aimless. So if I were you, I would right away prepare a schedule. I also did prepare a schedule for you that might help you in your journey. And that schedule is basically a one month, a 25 day schedule starting from the 22nd of January when I'll post the video to the 19th of Feb, which also happens to be my birthday, by the way. So these many days, I have kind of chalked out a plan. I'll try to stick it on the uh, screen so that it's easier for you to see as well, where you'll be, a you'll be giving four GTs, right? Four grand tests. Every Sunday you'll pre prepare and you'll appear in the proper format a grand test. And then the remaining days of the week, you'll prepare and you'll study, right? So you might be wondering, I have not read the whole thing even once. My syllabus is not covered. I have never given a GT before because I have not completed the syllabus. Whether this schedule will work for you or not. Try giving it a shot. This 23rd January, Sunday, make it a point to sit in front of the laptop, in front of your computer, whatever you have, trying to emulate, wear a mask, trying to emulate the whole examination conducting process and just assess where you stand. This 23rd of January, you might perform really poor and you might get horrible grades. But whatever it is, you'll at least know where you stand in this whole competitive exam process. Now, once you're given the GT, what would you be doing for the rest of the days of the week? You have to assign number of days for a particular subject, like one day for anatomy, one day for physiology, one day for biochemistry. If you feel, you can also take a screenshot of this particular screen and have it stuck in front of your desk so that you know that one day for anatomy means within that one day you have to get done with your preparation and you have to put in a decent number of hours for that. Now to break things down for you, what can you do for that one day that has been assigned to a particular subject? Say for example, day one, you start with anatomy. You've never read anatomy before. This is the first time you're study, studying anatomy. So obviously the number of hours that you'll have to dedicate will be a decent number, right? So when you wake up in the morning, you give a thorough reading to the whole topic. If you have your notes prepared, which I expect by now you will be having a note, whether it's self-written or printed, whatever it is, give a thorough reading of the whole subject as fast as possible. 
once you're done with the reading, the number of MCQs that you will be doing maybe would vary from 75 to 100, but never less than that. So you'll only do MCQs around 75 in number of anatomy that particular day, right? Then you'll go do 25 MCQs from random subjects. If anatomy is your first subject that you start off with and say physiology is the next subject that you'll be preparing, on, when you're studying physiology, make sure to, to do 25 MCQs from, of anatomy so that you don't forget, right? This is something called as spaced repetition, which will help you to retain the subject better for a very, very prolonged period of time. Once you're done with, say, physiology, you're, you were done with anatomy the day before, and when you were preparing for physiology, you read the subject, you did the 75 MCQs of physiology, you did the 25 MCQs from anatomy, and then you saw that you really did not perform as you expected. You did perform a lot of mistakes. Then you'll go back to the notes of anatomy and dedicate one hour of that day when you're preparing for physiology towards anatomy. So that this will be again a sort of a passive revision and that will definitely help you to retain better. I hope I have made myself clear as to what you can do for the coming one month till 19th of Feb and what you can do every day to make sure that you prepare every subject in the most thorough way possible. So, how can you maintain this study-life balance? Please dedicate a certain number of hours every day that you'll be studying. It's advisable for you to have a routine so that every day you wake up in the morning, you do your number of hours of studies and then you give yourself a break. It's very important for you to do things that you want to do things that you will rejuvenate you and so that the next cycle you keep start studying, you'll be fresh and you'll perform better. The next thing that I can advise you, you don't have to do it right away, is decreasing the number of hours you spend on social media. Social media, discussing your preparation strategy with your friends or whoever it might be, sometimes can be a bit um, questionable as it can raise questions of self-doubt it can make you feel anxious. It can make you question your preparation and whether or not you're doing the right thing for yourself. Trust me, you want the best for yourself and you are on track. So limit the number of social media hours that you spend on say Facebook, Instagram or YouTube and stick to your schedule that you prepare for yourself. So last but not the least, motivation. I don't think I'm the right person to motivate you or I would be able to, to motivate you enough as you would be able to do for yourself. Make sure you know why you're preparing. You're already a doctor, you have nothing to lose. You're preparing for becoming a specialist, pursuing your dream branch. Be passionate towards it and that will automatically serve as a motivation for you. Let me help you remind yourself why you began with this whole journey in the first place. Imagine yourself being a specialist once and writing your prescription as a specialized doctor of medicine, or maybe conducting your first delivery as a gynecologist, or maybe assisting in the first operation as a surgeon. This feels surreal, right? So that in itself should serve as a motivation for you. With this, I would like to conclude the video saying that as promised, I would be there right by your side as a friend in this journey of yours from becoming a doctor to a specialized doctor. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe before leaving. Thank you.